All right, Shalom. This is your brother Shamak at the Great Millstone Atlanta Camp. Before I get started, I'm going to give all the glory. Infinite praises unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rachak Wadash, Yahweh being the Heavenly Father's true name, and His only begotten Son's true name being Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well and who are the leaders of the Israelites in these last days. All right. I also want to give Shalom to all the sincere brothers that push teaching this truth worldwide. And Shalom to all the sincere listeners and you sincere believers. All right. Just here with the um, basically a remarkable event that took place in Mayfield, Kentucky. All right. Besides the devastation of the Lord's judgment. All right, of the of the Kentucky tornado, or just as you see here, the aftermath, at least seventy four dead, over one hundred still missing. Okay, which and it's an image that's, that just simply showed the illustration or devastation that took place in the city, man. Okay, all right, and the tornado was, took place over two hundred miles, man. So this affected a couple states, man, not just one. All right, Le you know leaving people without power. Let you know houses in general, man. Cars destroyed, all right. And this is all the, the this is the wrath of the Lord's judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. The Lord's in full control, all right. He brings judgment, okay, good and bad, all right, according to man's works, okay, all right. So nothing, you know, anything that the Lord does is not just is 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 not unjustified, basically, okay, or isn't done without reasoning. So, but I also wanted to point out. A photo that was circulating through the through the media that was that was because that would be considered you know remarkable, but in the eyes of unbelievers or in the eyes of the of, of the world, it could be seen as a coincidence. All right, but it will but being with us having understanding the wisdom not to understand of these scriptures, we understand that this is not a coincidence. All right, and that the Lord or the word of the Lord is basically was basically going to stand in these last days. And you see, it says the photo of God. It says photos like it. Photo. God was watching out for Mayfield, Kentucky. Not one Bible moved inside church that had roof ripped off. And you see the image here. You know, the world will look at this as a, oh, that's just a coincidence. No. Nothing with the Lord's coincidence, man. Okay? And I want to get that word coincidence first before I grab uh, or go into the scriptures. This is coincidence on just a quick Google search of coincidence definition within Google. It says a remarkable concurrence of events or circumstances without apparent casual connection. All right. So those that don't believe in Yahweh Bashman Asha are not privy to the understanding or the or, or the accounts that, that are within the Bible may just, you know, ignore, you know, this particular event or this or this uh or these Bibles that weren't, you know, moved within the church as a as a in a within a full blown tornado, man. And you see, you see within one of the images, a complete houses were destroyed. All right, but in this case here, the Lord had it set up, and he's very meticulous. He had it set up where not one Bible move, was moved, man. It was still on the bookcases within the seats, you know. It says, verse, uh, the definition number two, it says, correspondence in nature or in time of occurrence. All right? And I just want to go get a few scriptures, just a few, you know, hit some scriptures first concerning that. You know, nothing with the Lord is coincidence, man. Let me grab uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 33. And it reads, The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Okay? So a situation may happen, but it's all, it's all, it was all preordained by the, by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right, of course, through the Holy Spirit, through the Rechach Kodash. Okay? I also want to grab Proverbs chapter 19. Oh, I'm going to get verse 21, okay? It's Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. The man's heart going into the man's uh, la'ah, which means going into the mind, all right? It says, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand, all right? And this is that's just an example, all right? That one Bible not being removed within that church and within the tornado happening, that's the counsel of the Lord standing, man, because these, these these words are faithful and true, all right? And that's, and that's truly symbolism, all right? Because when these things... Or in these, uh, or in life, or within life changing events, you know, money may go away, fame may go away, women, any possession you may have. But what's gonna, what's gonna stand at the end of the day? The word of the Lord, because prophecies are still gonna come to pass. The Lord's gonna still defend those that believe in Him. All right, concerning the Israelites, concerning the elect 
Okay, men, women, and children. All right. Those things are still going to stand no matter what. That is not changing, man. The Lord, the Lord said in Malachi 3 and 6, he's, he, the Lord uh, is a man of his word. He changed not, roughly paraphrasing, man. Okay. And also, this, this next chapter over with Proverbs 20 and 24, it shows you that nothing, <laughs> nothing uh, is a coincidence, basically. This is Proverbs 20, verse 24. It says, man goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? All right, so things that, that take place within our lives, man, is preordained by Yahweh Bashem Shah. One big example would be us coming into the truth or believing in the word of the Lord, believing in the Holy Scriptures. It was preordained for that to take place. And, and for those that hear the word, preordained for you to hear that word, whether it be for your destruction or whether it be, whether it be for your salvation. Whether it be for you to get get uh for you to hear that warning and, and, and for your judgment and your death to be justified, or for you to hear the word and for you to believe so you can be delivered in these last days as well. All right. So with that, let me carry on into uh Luke chapter twenty one. Let me get Luke twenty one, verse twenty five, which should further home further bring home the point as well. But this is Luke twenty one verse twenty five, and it reads. And this is this truly is a uh a, a slight uh faith booster. You know, cause we hey you when you see when you see something like that, man, and it's, that's not the first time that it has happened. That's not the first time. This is just the most recent, okay? With the with that bite with the Bible not being removed, man. Okay? But this is Luke 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations where perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men, and this is going to the into the last days with, uh, concerning the return of Yahweh Shah, all right, the Savior and the Deliverer of the Israelites. All right, so verse twenty six it says, "Men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory." Who's that Son of Man? Yahweh Shah, all right, the Son of God, all right. It says, coming in a cloud. What's that cloud representing? A chariot, the chariots of the Lord, whom the world identifies as un unidentified flying objects, man. All right? But they're chariots of the Lord. They're not aliens. Okay? It says, in great glory is going to come with power. Verse 28, it says, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draw of nigh. We're gonna, why are we going to lift uh, look up? All right, because we're going to be delivered by those chariots. Lord willing, we be of that part, a part of that number, that preordained deliverance. Okay, because man going is of the Lord. Okay, verse twenty nine says, and he spake to them a parable: Behold, the fig tree and all the trees, when they when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of the Most High is nigh at hand. All right, so when we see these prophecies come to pass, World War Three, the, the the agenda and the implementation of the of the microchip push push worldwide, we understand that this is we are closer and closer to the end. You know, people protesting and, and, and being rebellious against the governments. That's that's prophecy, man. All right, all these such things, man. We see, we we understand that we're getting closer and closer to the end. Natural disasters. All right, because it says it shall be earthquakes in diverse places. You know, let me grab that because that that's definitely. Uh, relevant, relevant to the article that was brought out. Let me get Matthew chapter 24, verse 7. It said, it reads, it reads, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines. People dying, you know, that's going to be taking place. People dying of starvation in these last days and pestilences, which are daily diseases. People are going to be sick as hell in these last days. And it said, wait, well, earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay. So this is the beginning, man. When you see tornadoes, all these such, all these such, uh, different type of events in different places. All right, this will let you know that we're in the last days, cause this not these things are not going to be taking place in the kingdom of heaven. We're in the last day. We're getting closer and closer to the, to the Lord's return. All right. So as we get closer, the events are going to uh, the events or the type or or the level of the events, I should say, are going to increase. Okay. But so this is Luke chapter twenty one. Verse 32, it says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. So these prophecies are guaranteed going to be fulfilled in, in our lifetime. Okay? 
verse 33 says heaven and the earth and he, you know one one spiritual uh way of understanding that it's going to take place in our lifetime because the lord has his prophet sending out sending out uh the message man we're, we're the lord's mouthpiece all right in this lifetime so he's gonna he's gonna fulfill that judgment okay so verse 33 again says heaven and the earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away all right because the counsel of the lord shall stand as it mentioned in proverbs chapter 16 okay it says heaven and earth heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away. All right, because these words are guaranteed, and because they, they, these words are faithful and true. All right, the Bible, where the Bible spoke of it, is going to happen. All right, or in some in in, in some cases in prophecies in history, it has happened. Okay, but there's still prophecies to be fulfilled in these last days that we're living in right now. Verse thirty four and says, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that they come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come upon, shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come upon, that shall come to pass. And those things were listed in Matthew twenty four: famines, dying, of starvation. We want to escape that deadly diseases, those pestilence, you know, those earthquakes in diverse places, man. Natural disasters in diverse places. We want to escape all these things, man. So we can, so we say what? To stand before the Son of Man. So we can see Yahweh shall return and deliver us up. That's what the word, that's what the term Yahweh shall means. He delivers, man. Okay? And we're, and we're hoping to be delivered. Okay? That's what, that's where our hope lies in, man. Let me go on down to uh, 1 Peter. Chapter 1. I'm going to, uh... I go to eight. I go to eighteen. Okay, and it reads: For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. So that goes back to what I mentioned before, concerning money, fame, women, any possessions, man. But the word of the Lord is going to stand. Those things could could easily be taken by the Lord. Okay, all right. But the word of the Lord is still going to stand. That's why. That's why. That's how our faith is unmovable. All right, because you can't take. Someone's faith away. That's a gift from Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. You can't take knowledge away, man. All right? So it said one more time with verse 18, with 1 Peter chapter 1. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Yahweh Shai as of a, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, because Yahweh Shai was that was that sacrifice for the Israelites. That's why we, that's how we're able to receive grace and mercy from the from the heavenly Father through His Son, okay, and also able to understand these words that we're reading now within the Holy Bible. Verse twenty says, "Who verily was foreordained? See, it was foreordained, man. Hey, it was, everything is controlled of the Lord, man. It was, it was preordained, all right, predestined to take place." It says, "Who was verily, who verily was free or foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you." Who by him do believe in the most high that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in the most high. Okay. Verse 22. So those things happen for, for, for the believers to uh to believe in the heavenly father, man. That's why Yahweh came forth on the scene to push the gospel of the heavenly father. And that's why we're here to push the gospel of, of the of the heavenly father through his son. All right. It says, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. Through the spirit unto unfeigned love to the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of the Most High, which liveth and abideth forever. All right. So that word, that word is living and it is it is that symbolism of, of the roof being blown off in that tornado in Mayfield, Kentucky. And the Bible's what? They're they they are living and abiding, man. They're enduring, says verse 24. For all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man. As the flower of grass, the grass withereth, and the flower therefore thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. All right, this word. So that's so that so that event, that remarkable uh, occurrence. All right, that it mentioned with the Google definition with coincidence. That's an example of the of the word of the Lord enduring, man. All right, during and during through a rotato do do uh during door uh or during 
uh, tornado, man. You know, tongue twister. <laughs> but that's just, that's just simply an example, and that and that's just a, a a faith booster to show that this word is you know it's basically unstoppable. It's no stopping the word. Is just like the scripture says, it's nothing that you could do against the truth before the truth. You know, nothing. All right. So lastly, I want to grab Ephesians chapter two because it all comes down to faith at the end of the day, man. And we're delivered through our faith. So this is Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. And it reads, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Because hey, these these videos and these messages and also the warnings, man. The warnings is for the world. But the, the, hey, the, the edification, the exhortation, the encouragement is for the believers in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. The power of the Israelites, man. All right. It says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of the most high. All right, so that's another thing. The, 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 that's another thing that's shown that eighty that this uh that events and, and everything that take place within our lives is not by coincidence or just by chance or oh, it just happened. No, it's it, it's predestined for you to believe. All right, because it's a gift. It's not of ourselves, man. It's of the heavenly Father. Okay, it's same with the events that take place on the earth. Okay, so Lord willing, or that's was edifying and exhorting. Concerning the tornado, concerning the Bibles not being uh, unmoved, okay, or or slacky or moved within the, within the church building during a during a whole tornado, all right, with the with the roof being blown off, okay. This is just simply an example, man. All right, the Lord's power, truly. All right, so I will end up by giving all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, or Hakwadash. All right, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. All right, hey, Shalom. Keep the faith. Shalom.